your guest in your tent. Mardi Gras organizers want to relocate from Port Arthur to Port Natchez, but tonight that move faced a large crowd of roadblocks. Find out why in a couple of moments. A huge investment into downtown Port Arthur has city officials hopeful for the future. We break down the details from this monumental deal just ahead. A little bit of haze and even some smoke out there this evening. The rain, though, is definitely on its way as well. You're watching KFDM News tonight at 10. Tonight, the location of next year's Mardi Gras is still in limbo. Organizers wanted out of Port Arthur and relocated to Port Natchez. KFDM's Angel San Juan is back from Port Natchez tonight, where citizens were not shy about expressing their views tonight. Were they, Angel? This is a pretty hot topic going on. It sure is all throughout Southeast Texas. Now, Mardi Gras has called Port Arthur home for nearly three decades, but organizers say declining revenue and attendance is forcing them to find a new address. Their wish is Port Natchez, but as they learn tonight, many Port Natchez citizens don't want the big party in their backyard. To call it a packed house is an understatement, and it was more than standing room only. There were folks on the floor and out the door. Port Natchez citizens filling city council chambers, wanting to learn more about Mardi Gras, possibly relocating from Port Arthur to Port Natchez. We believe Port Natchez and the Riverfront Park would make an outstanding venue to host this family friendly event. The folks that run our parades have looked at several different possible parade routes and are excited about the potential of Port Natchez. But not everyone here wants Mardi Gras revelers as neighbors. What we do have is a lot of very good people in Port Natchez and they deserve better than being taken over by this Mardi Gras activity. There's concern that Mardi Gras is just too big for Port Natchez, creating parking and security nightmares for the mid-county city. I just think it's too much to ask of a small bedroom community that is almost all residential, that already, as they've said, we run a good risk on extra crime, extra theft, extra whatever. Others, however, believe Mardi Gras is the economic boost Port Natchez is lacking. We need the tax revenue to come in here. And it's not just riffraff. If y'all would get out and just open your arms and go down there for a couple of hours, I'm telling you, it's a family-oriented thing. As a citizen of Port Natchez, I'm for it 100%. Mardi Gras chairman of the board, Tim Romero, says Port Natchez is what Mardi Gras needs to survive. He says the move is a financial necessity because in Port Arthur, he says the event is losing money and attendance, declining from a peak turnout of 20,000 to about 10,000 this past year. Organizers estimate moving Mardi Gras to Port Natchez could generate a crowd of 15,000. Our board believes that because of the centralized location and the incredible vision of the city concerning the riverfront development, that the city of Port Natchez and the park offer the right alternatives to stabilizing Mardi Gras Southeast Texas and enhance our opportunity for future growth. Organizers say they're ready to make the move a reality for Mardi Gras 2020, but Port Natchez City Council is not in a hurry. The mayor says his priority is what's best for citizens. We have no timelines at all. Uh, Mardi Gras may have a timeline that they need to have things done, but we're going to take whatever time we need to make sure we get all the questions answered and all the, the feelings out so that we have a good feel of what the citizens of Port Natchez wants. Port Natchez City Council will reconvene again in two weeks to further discuss the Mardi Gras move. But even then, the mayor says no decision will be made at that time. It's just another informational meeting like tonight's. Greg? All right, Angel, thank you. More details are emerging in a milestone announcement for downtown Port Arthur revitalization. Motiva will be buying two historic buildings in downtown Port Arthur and expects to be finished with remodeling by 2021. The federal building would be redeveloped for conference and commercial office space. The Adams building would be used as office space and potential retail space. Initial assessments assume both buildings contain asbestos and lead paint but officials say they have remediation costs included in their scope. And officials say the property tax money from these could fund other projects around the city. 
You know, that's where we get our money from, property tax and sales tax here in the city of Port Arthur. And for us to have several million, tens of millions of dollars worth of investment coming on the private side for our commercial buildings, for us to pull down some property tax, I mean, it's going to be awesome. Officials say they have informed the owners of the buildings of their intent to close on or before May 15th. Well, maybe the rain event won't be as bad as we first thought. Maybe. Mm. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Well, what we're doing is we're trying to salvage part of the weekend. I think that's going to happen. I think Friday, Saturday should be pretty good. Sunday still is, you know, it's, it's kind of off the boards as far as enjoying outdoor activities. And one thing, it's interesting tonight. See this yeah, on our sky look at camp. that. This, a lot of this is not really fog. It's also smoke, which has been coming in from the south throughout the day, mixing with the moisture in the air. This is from kind of a seasonal thing they do down in Mexico and Central America. They burn a lot of their fields in preparation for planting. And we're getting some of that smoke all over East Texas this evening, even to portions of Louisiana. Hopefully that'll improve pretty soon. 70 degrees outside right now at the Port of Port Arthur. The winds are light, pretty light out of the southeast and south this afternoon and evening. And the next few days, it's going to be pretty warm, about 80 degrees. That's actually pretty close to the normal high temperature for this time of year. We still have some rain to our north. That's mainly around Woodville, back over toward the northern parts of Polk County. We'll talk about that big rain chance we have coming our way on Sunday in a few minutes. Well, happening now, a Sprint cell phone tower is causing controversy in a California city. It's on the campus of an elementary school, and some parents say it's linked to several recent cases of childhood cancer. The claim states the tower could have exposed the children to harmful radiation. A 10-year-old was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016. Another developed brain cancer. Two more were diagnosed this year. Engineers say the tower met government and industry standards. Parents hired their own investigator who found radiation levels higher, but within government safety standards. Sprint, however, turned that tower off and plans to move it. Actor Jesse Smollett had until today to reimburse the city of Chicago for their investigation into what authorities say ended up being a staged attack on himself. The city says he did not pay that $130,000 bill, so the city's law department is preparing a civil complaint. It'll file against Smollett very soon. Now, in a letter to Smollett, the city gave him seven days to pay, saying if he didn't, he may be prosecuted. The letter came after a prosecutor unexpectedly dropped 16 felony disorderly conduct charges against Smollett. He was charged after he told police he was the victim of a hate crime in January. The Empire actor maintains he was telling the truth about the entire attack. President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, is offering new information to House Democrats in what could be a bid to delay the start of his jail term. Cohen is supposed to begin a three-year prison sentence May 6th for financial crimes, campaign finance violations, and lying to Congress. But Cohen's attorneys have told lawmakers he's discovered a sizable number of files on a hard drive that might be helpful to investigators. The letter asked for congressional help persuading the Southern District of New York to delay the start of his sentence so the information on that hard drive can be reviewed. Two refinery fires within two weeks have instructors doubling up on safety protocol. KFDM's Natalie Haddad explains what many are putting an emphasis on. Despite recent Houston area refinery fires, Bailey Seals says... I'm trying to get in with refineries, um, get interviews, testing, anything I can get, I'm ready for it. Bailey is a student at the Lamar Institute of Technology. She says the safety measures LIT taught her make her confident for a post-grad life in refinery work, despite the recent accidents. Our teachers always go over everything that we need to do, and when we come out to the unit and stuff like that, we have a safety meeting, and then we put on our, all our PPE, and the teacher makes sure everything's running smoothly. Dr. Valerie Rory is the program director of the Process Operating Technology Program. She says incidents such as the Deer Park and Crosby plant fires are used as learning tools in the classroom. When something like this happens, all of our instructors will talk about it in the class. I mean, I was showing videos and, and just kind of bringing home to students that uh, you have to be aware all of the time. Dr. Worry says the POT program emphasizes that one lapse in judgment could lead to potential devastation. The job we do on a day-to-day -day basis can become very routine 
And I always tell my students when it becomes routine, that's when you have to pay the most attention. She says the hands-on experience on LIT's personal refinery unit and the safety meetings give students clarity on what to expect after they graduate. Our students are going to these companies and they expect us to prepare them. I'm not really worried because I know they taught me well and I can do it. So Safety first, always. In Beaumont, Natalie Haddad, KFDM 6 News. The president backing off on threats to close the border, but what will happen if he follows through?